Hello and you're very welcome to this video in our series on Unit 4 for the Legal Certificate of Business and this is our last video on calculating ratios. In this video we're going to look at the debt equity ratio, we're going to look at the formula for debt equity ratio, calculating the debt equity ratio, analysing the trend of debt equity ratio and finding out what each of the various terms within that means. So let's get stuck into what these ratios are. So we've looked at profitability ratios and liquidity ratios in the last videos. This is what we call a gearing ratio and it's the only gearing ratio we have on the course. Now what is a gearing ratio at the end of the day? So a gearing ratio tells us the proportion that the business funding comes from business borrowings or from the issue of shares. So in other words if we break that down how much in order for the business to operate the business has to get money from somewhere. So the question is where do they get this money from? They can get it from two main sources, generally speaking, either from borrowing money or through giving away ownership of the firm. So basically look at this, the proportion of how much we given away in how much of the money do we get is from borrowing money or from giving away, uh, not giving away, but sold away in ownership of the firm. So our debt equity ratio, if we break that down, OK, debt is when we borrow money and how much we owe. OK, and equity, equity is another word for control, OK, or ownership. So how much, so it's the amount of loans versus the amount of ownership ratio. So our formula is quite simply debt capital to equity capital. Now, capital is another word for money, okay? So debt capital means how much money we've borrowed versus equity uh, capital, how much money we've uh, sold and controlled. So how do we add these up? For debt capital, we've got two figures. We've got debt uh, preference shares and long-term loan. Now, what what are preference shares? Preference shares are a bit different to normal shares. It means you're a part owner of the firm, correct. However, preference shares, it means you're guaranteed a dividend each year, okay? So if you sell a preference share to someone, that means that person is guaranteed to get a dividend from your firm each year. And for that reason, we deem it to be debt capital as in borrowed money, because you, when they buy a preference share, they have to get some sort of payback each year. A long-term loan, or for legal student accounting students might be referred to this as debentures, okay, is quite simply as it sounds. You borrowed money which you're paying back over a long period of time. Equity capital, as we said, is money from, uh, the, set, uh, from the ownership of the business. So ordinary shares. If you're an ordinary shareholder you're, a shareholder, you're a part owner of the business. So when we sell shares in the business, that means someone else is owning part of the business. Uh, and retained earnings. Retained earnings, uh, or also known as reserves, uh, is savings we have from previous years, from previous years' profits. So for debt capital, we add preference shares and long-term loan. For equity capital, we add ordinary shares and retained earnings. There's a bit of learning of that there. So look at an example question here. We're told that the long-term loan is 800,000, the issued share capital is 700,000, and retained earnings is 300,000. Key thing to look with the, or, uh, with the ordinary shares, by the way, is that we're looking at issued, not authorised. Authorised shares is the amount a business is allowed to sell, Okay, issued share capital or uh, issued shares is the amount they've actually sold. So issued share capital refers to the amount of ordinary shares actually sold. So we have to calculate with this the debt equity ratio. So what is our debt capital? Uh, is our preference shares and long term loan and our equity capital is ordinary shares and retained earnings. So our 800,000 euro goes to 700,000 plus 300,000. Okay. So obviously we've got a bit of maths to do first there before we get into it. So we need to add our 700 and 300,000 together. So we now have a ratio of 800,000 is to 100,000. Now, as we know, folks, we need to get that right hand side down to being one. So our ratios are always something is to one. So I'm going to divide both sides by a million, of course. OK, so I'm dividing both sides by a million and I'm getting a ratio of 0 0.8 is to one. OK, so what does this actually mean? So this shows, as we said, the comparison between the source of funding for the company, i.e. funding from debt, loans, debentures, preference shares, and from other sources that do not need to be paid back, so it's uh, part of our ownership, which is our reserves and ordinary shares. It should be less than 1 is to 1. So in this case, our answer is 0 0.8 is to 1, so that is good. Okay. Above 1.1 is referred to as high gearing, i.e. funded through a high level of debt. This means the business has a large amount of repayments to make and have a large interest bill to pay. If we break this down, okay, what this means is for every euro of equity um, sold in the company, we have a euro, if it's one to one, uh, of debt capital. Okay, in the case of our example question was 0 0.8 to 1, it means for every euro to fund the business that was funded through equity capital, 0 0.8 or 80 cent 
was funded through debt capital. So if it's above 1.1, let's say it's 1.2 is to 1, that's called high gearing. In other words, we're let, we, we've, to, to run the business, we owe more in debt than we have out in equity capital. Okay, and the knock on effect of that is that you're going to have to pay, uh, you've lots of repayments to make, which isn't ideal. Okay, if it's below one is to one, it's low gearing, so it's for the true low levels of debt, and that is a definitely a preferred situation because therefore it's easier for the business to be able to pay dividends to its shareholders, which keeps the shareholders happier and has an effect on the share price, and it means you can reinvest profits into the business if you want to expand. Firms should not become too reliant on debt capital because the interest has to be paid off, preference dividends have to be paid to the preference shareholders, whether or not the firm is making a profit, and that's a key thing to note. If you've preference shareholders, you have to pay back them a, di a certain dividend, whatever is agreed um, at the outset of selling. Also, if you have a loan, you have to pay back the interest regardless, so it reduces your flexibility a huge amount there. Okay. Uh, if the ratio increases from one year to the next, then the firm is becoming more reliant on debt capital, which is not a good trend. Whereas if the ratio decreases from one year to the next, then the firm has become less reliant on debt capital, and that's a positive trend. That is a good thing. So, that brings us to the end of today's video, folks, where you now know what the debt equity ratio formula is, they are to calculate the debt equity ratio, and you know the trend of the debt equity ratio as well, how to analyse the trend between the two. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, why not give it a like? Um, please subscribe to the channel as well by pressing the button in the middle of the screen there. And of course, if you have any questions, ask below in the comments. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video now. Bye.